The much repeated buzz phrase that COVID-19 doesn't discriminate suggests a false sense of equality. In fact, the pandemic lays bare deep-seated social and economic inequalities. People in poverty are at greater risk of getting infected with COVID-19 and they will carry the brunt of its economic fallout. Government wage support or furlough schemes are not available to workers in the informal sector who don't have contracts. Informal businesses are not profiting from tax relief as they often don't pay the same set of formal taxes. Many programs have sought to provide relief through direct cash payments to broad sections of the population. But governments frequently struggle to target these to informal workers, and when they reach them, they're often not sufficient. The pictures of precarious informal labourers leaving India's large cities have highlighted just how fragile these livelihoods are. But two additional financial burdens remain hidden from sight. Low-income families already have high debt loads, even in normal times. The risk is, of course, exacerbated by the fact that they pay even more for their debt than others do. They risk right now falling even further, even faster, and then struggling to get out of debt traps once they're in. The other danger is that fear about cash money being dirty or contaminated, on which the science is inconclusive, will further exclude poor people from the economy because they mainly use cash. So not being able to make payments for basic needs could end up meaning that hunger leads to further avoidable deaths. At the end of April, more than 150 countries had either expanded or introduced social protection measures. The promise and potential of these measures is encouraging and laudable, but not enough. Too many people are falling through the cracks and need help now. And the support needs to be built into a long-term strategy to keep providing support when people need it into the future. The post-crisis period will likely see an already vulnerable informal sector under even more pressure. Rising unemployment levels are likely to push more people into the informal economy. This risks increasing competition between informal businesses and displacing workers. In the coming years, Governments across the world will also be seeking to raise additional revenue. As the tax bases of many developing countries are currently quite narrow, pressures to broaden them by taxing the informal economy are likely to increase. While they didn't get tax breaks during the crisis, informal workers could essentially be asked to foot the bill, disproportionately hitting some of the most vulnerable groups in society. Far more radical and comprehensive measures are needed right now. If large companies can get cash injections and debt relief, then so should the poor in order to survive this pandemic. Personally, I think this is a watershed moment in which progressive social policies, like a universal basic income, for instance, are rightly on the table again. What we can't afford is to continue with this much global inequality. Mm -hmm.